Hi guys, welcome back to the channel, FPL Consult here and today we are going to do the ultimate 3 premium draft. Right, so this was a heavily requested one and that's because most of you guys don't want to choose between the premiums, you want all 3. Right, so in this draft, I will reveal the 3 premiums I would go for and how we can structure our team around them so that we can still have a strong game week 1 team to start the season. Right, so of course, if you do enjoy this video, please help me out and give it a like. Subscribe if you are new around here and let's get on with the video. So as you can see on the top left of the screen, we have a 3 premium draft. 100 mil squad value, so zero in the bank. A little bit of uh, rigidity there, but that's okay because this draft is really strong, right? And later on, I will mention the pros and con of uh, pros and cons of this draft as well, right? And then for our formation, we're gonna go for a 442 formation, but this can really turn into a 532, and later you guys will see, right? So we're gonna start off and go with Sanchez at five four, uh, four point five mil, right? And the reason for this is because we can't afford two. Uh, expensive a keeper if we want to go for three premiums right so sanchez 4.5 mil is really kind of an, an enabler for us as well right and honestly brighton is pretty strong to start the season they have a good run of fixtures as well and we can kind of keep them until game week eight and just leave sanchez in goal um, all the way till then right so sanchez makes our goal and we'll now talk about the defense so at the back, we have Trent, Alexander-Arnold, we have Diaz, James, and Tomiyasu, right? So one look at this defense, and we cover all the major defenses that we would want, right? Liverpool, City, Chelsea, and Arsenal, right? So Trent, of course, is an essential. James, to some of us, is an essential as well, right? And I've gone for Diaz instead of Laporte and Cancelo. Now, Laporte is currently said uh, to be unfit for... Uh, the first few game weeks and that's why I've gone for Diaz instead of him, right? And we can't go for Cancelo because we need to save that extra 1 mil to put it into our premiums, right? So that's why Diaz makes the defense here, right? And we've gone for Tomiyasu as well as a pretty good enabler at 4.5 mil. Arsenal do have a good run of starting fixtures so he can keep some clean sheets there and probably he would start, right? He is still um, recovering but obviously if he's fit, he would be the first choice um, right back for Arsenal, right? So obviously we would want that enabler who is nailed, of course, uh, in the Arsenal defense to be in our squad to kind of give us that clean sheet coverage for Arsenal as well, right? So there goes our defense four at the back, right? And we will have one more on the bench. Um, is quite a differential pick there, but uh, later on I will cover this and let's talk about the midfield now. So in midfield we have Mr. Essential Salah. Right, and then we have Saka, Neto, and Leon Bailey. Right, so Saka is obviously um, in the squad because we do want an Arsenal coverage, right? So obviously a little bit of a spoiler, but there won't be any Arsenal forwards that I'm going for, right? No Jesus in the squad. So that's why I've gone for Saka as that 8.0 uh, 8 mil um, placeholder for uh, the midfield spot as well in case we would want to do a swap out two other 8.0 midfielders because we know that that 8 million bracket for midfielders is a pretty lucrative one, right? So that's why Saka makes the team. And then we have two really good enablers, right? Neto and Bailey have really come up this preseason as kind of the best budget picks if we want to go for uh, midfield options that kind of, they, they play and they also have good attacking threat as well, right? So they really enable the team to kind of have the premiums that we want to go for. And that's why Neto and Bailey, I do think, uh, are kind of good value for what they offer um, and kind of saves us money as well, right? So now, finally, to reveal the last two premiums, let's take a look. So guys, now here are our two premium forwards, right? And it's no surprise, it's Kane and Haaland, right? How do we answer the debate whether to go for Kane or Haaland? Just get them both, right? So in this three premium draft, the three premiums are obviously Salah, Kane and Haaland, right? And honestly, if you take a look at this whole team, is pretty strong, right? We have the key attackers from each of the teams uh, that we want to go for, right? Liverpool, uh, Tottenham Hotspurs, and also Manchester City, right? So through premium draft, I don't think we're really sacrificing too much in the other areas as well, right? So on the whole, the balance of this squad is pretty good, right? So now let's take a look at the bench, um, which has kind of enabled us to build this team, of course, as well, right? A bench of enablers. So on the bench, we have Steel in goal, right? 4.0 million uh, keeper, and we're not going to go for anything more than a 4.0 mil keeper, right? And Steel, of course, would come into goal if Sanchez get, gets uh, injured whatsoever, right? So a safe option there. Then we have Neko Williams, Andreas Pereira, and Archer, 
right? So all of them are kind of the cheapest in each of their departments, right? And Neko Williams, I've put him first on the bench because he rotates really well with Leon Bailey, right? So we know that Aston Villa have a good run of first three fixtures, but thereafter, their fixtures kind of take a turn, right? And that's where Neko Williams and also Andreas Pereira, of course, can come in to kind of take his spot and keep our team with good fixtures, right? And pretty strong all round still. Right, so our bench is not really a bench that doesn't play. Our bench is still pretty strong and we do need to have a strong bench if we want to have three premiums, right? Because that would also mean that we are having some enablers in other areas like Neto and Bailey, right? So with Neko Williams and Andreas Pereira on the bench, we can then bring them in whenever Neto or Bailey don't have good fixtures, right? So on the whole, a very, very decent team and one that, of course, those of us who want to go for three premiums can go for, right? But of course, with every draft, there are some pros and cons, so I'm going to cover them right now. So on the screen right now, we're going to evaluate the draft that we just created, right? So on the left uh, is the screenshot on the FPL website of the draft we just built, right? And let's talk about the pros and the cons of this draft, right? So obviously, the pros of this draft is that we have three strong premiums. Now, what that allows us to do is to jump on the in-form captain of uh, that game week, right? So we have Salah, Kane and Haaland to choose from, of course, and we always want to captain our premiums because they kind of present the best value, um, and that's kind of why we get them, of course, right? So Salah, we know, rotates well with Kane in terms of captaincy, right? I covered this in a video where uh, I, I revealed my first draft as well. And in that video, I did talk about how uh, as a captaincy option, Salah and Haaland don't rotate as well as Salah and Kane, right? But right now in this draft, we have all three, right? So we have the luxury of choosing the best captain for that game week, right? So nothing to worry in terms of captaincy there when we have three strong premiums. Right, and then we have Arsenal coverage as well, right? Because the, the one of the cons of this draft, which I will talk about later, is that we don't have Jesus, right? Which is an Arsenal attacker that a lot of us want to go for. But if we don't have him, we still have that Arsenal coverage in Saka, right? So not to worry about this, um, about that in this draft, right? And then if you take a look in the defense, we do cover all the defenses that we would want, and we would expect uh, to keep clean sheets as well. Right, Liverpool, City, Chelsea, and Arsenal. Right, so main defenses covered. Uh, nothing too too much to worry about there in the defense. Right, but let's talk about the cons now. Right, and firstly, there is no Cancelo or Jesus. Right, these are probably the two main players that are missing from this draft. Right, and Jesus, as mentioned before, he's having a really good preseason right now. Right, so going against Jesus may kind of take a, a turn on our rank. Right, but. Obviously, we can't have everything in a draft, right? We do have to take some risks. So one of it is that we're going to go for Saka instead of Jesus, right? And of course, no Cancelo because we're going to go for Diaz. He is 1 million cheaper and kind of gives us that budget for three premiums, right? So if we are willing to take the risk of not going with Cancelo and Jesus, then we can go for this draft, right? And another con of this draft, of course, is that it fields one enabler weekly. So what I mean by this is that we're going to rotate Bailey and Neko Williams and Andreas Pereira, all three of them around that one spot, right? That last, the 11th spot that we have in the team, right? So fielding one enabler weekly may not be a very good thing because at the end of the day, enablers, we don't really want them to be in our first 11, right? Usually we want them on the bench to kind of come on if any of our starting 11 um, doesn't, uh, start the game or is kind of injured, right? But in this draft, we are relying on one enabler weekly, right? So those of you who don't really want that, that is one of the cons of this draft, right? And personally, I do feel like I prefer my enablers on the bench, right? But in essence, if we want to go for three premiums, we can't have everything, right? And lastly, no money in the bank, right? I did mention that this draft is 100 mil, Right, so no money in the bank also means that we don't have that flexibility to account for price rises, right? But obviously, if we want to go for three premiums, most of the time, our, mo our money is going to be loaded into the starting 11, right? And our bench kind of is already really, really cheap, right? Our key all departments actually, from keeper all the way till um, defense, midfield and forward, all the four people on the bench all are the cheapest in their respective departments, right? So we can't go for any cheaper um, most of our money is on the starting 11. Alright, so no money in the bank. We're going to have to go with that. We're going to have to accept that this is one of the risks when we do this draft and have three premiums. Right, so, but on the whole, if we are alright with the downside of this draft, 
then the pros can really come into effect and can really improve our rank for us. Right, so on the whole, those of you who want to go for three premiums, I think this draft is pretty good. Right, take note of the cons and then thereafter kind of tweak this draft to how you want uh, to take your risks accordingly. Right, but I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Of course, um, if you did enjoy it, please help me out and give it a like. Subscribe if you are new around here and I will see you guys in another video very soon. Bye-bye.